So we've managed to import reference drawings into an IFC. We're going to check if this IFC file worked and we'll start with a fresh Blender session and just open our IFC project. We called it Architecture 001. And there we go. We have the spatial structure we created. So we'd like to start tracing out these drawings with a few walls. Now, we don't have any wall types and we don't know what wall types we need to create. So I'll first start by creating a drawing view. In the tab called Drawings and Documents, you can load your drawings and there are none. So I'm going to choose to add a plan floor for my ground floor and press plus. This will create a camera which is effectively our drawing view and when I activated the camera it hid all of my annotations and this is by design because if an annotation isn't part of a drawing it wouldn't show on this drawing but what I'm gonna do is include any annotations or any products which have the um, status as demolish for this I need to ensure that the active object is my camera I can re-click on the camera icon to make sure it is then I'll go to Object Information, I'll find Object Property Sets, and here I'll edit this property set, which is a EP set drawing, and I'll add a query in the Include property here. So I'd like to include any IFC annotation, which has the EP set status status property as equal to demolish hit OK then when I go back to my drawings and documents and I activate my drawing the ground floor annotation is imported correctly now with the camera selected either from the outliner from the viewport if you manage to select it or through activating it here so many ways you can hit GX and then GY okay so I made a mistake in creating these filters so for the ground floor demolition plan I'll activate my drawing and I'll look at the object information and under property sets here so I'm including any IFC annotation which has the EP set status as demolish and I'm also including any IFC element which has the status as demolish. Now this works okay then for my construction drawing I need to include any IFC annotation with the status as new and I'll also include all IFC elements then I'm going to exclude any IFC element which has the status demolish. Now, first floor plan. I need to include any IFC element plus any IFC annotation and also exclude any IFC element which has the status as demolish. Now, this view has also something I changed which is the clip end of the camera and this property will move in the drawings and documents most probably such that you can edit your view extents but for now we'll look at this so I know that my cut is at 1.5 meters and I want to look at a depth of 1.6 meters if I were to make this bigger I can see more objects so I'll keep it as 1.6 then I hit on activate drawing and we can see everything nice and smoothly. So I'm going to activate my measure tool and measure out some of these walls. So I have a lot of snaps enabled. I'm going to keep only my vertex and edge. And then I'll measure this. What is this? To delete a measure, I can click on it and press X. X. So, okay, so far I need three types of walls, maybe more if we count this wall here. So, I'll measure it out as well. 
So we're gonna split this uh, properties panel in two. So we'll put our mouse in between the viewport and the properties panel, and then we'll click and just drag down. And here it helps us create a second panel. Then I'll go to project overview. Yeah, that's fine. Let's make this smaller. We don't need it that big. I'm going to collapse project info, keep only the geometry. So here what I can do is load some materials. There are none. I can add them manually. Here it created this default material. I can name it C3540 category concrete. Then I'll add a brick material. Brick 70 mil. Category brick. Okay. So I can carry on doing this manually or with a little bonus here, you have a little script. So if you go to scripting and you open the file that you can either download or paste the text by going to new and then pasting your code here. Instead, I'm going to open uh, the little script I've prepared. It's called batch create materials, open text. And I already created the C3540 manually, the brick 70 mil as well. So I just need D3 materials. I'm going to press run script. Now back in my BIM workspace, I can find the materials I created. All right. If we want to create some wall types, let's first activate the wall tool. And then here it says add a, an IFC wall type. We'll just say, OK, let's do that. Then we'll launch the type manager. And it's created this wall type called Typex. We'll rename it here to brick 140. We'll first edit this wall type. So we'll press on um, activate the type or select the type. And even though it's hidden, we can still have it as the active object. So all the object information shown here will be for that active object. And here we can go now to um, object geometry and materials the third tab and we'll edit the material layer set it's used this 3540 concrete now we'll change the material to a brick then we'll edit the thickness to be 0. No, 0. 0.07 save changes and we'll duplicate this layer and hit save We're going to press Shift A and constrain it to somewhere. This, I'm going to keep only my vertex for now. I'll constrain it to that point. Press Shift Add. It's flipped, so I'm going to press Shift F. And you can find all the hotkeys under the tool here Active Tool. shift E. I'll duplicate this wall. Uh, I clicked right such that it doesn't really move. It just stays in the same place. Now shift R, shift R, shift R. There we go. I'll duplicate this wall again, GX. Now this wall is uh, a lot thicker than what it should be. And I think those were our 100 mil walls. Yeah, so let's create a 100 mil blockwork wall. So I'll duplicate this, rename, and we'll rename this to block 100. OK. I'll activate it. Then under the material layer set, press on the little pencil, I'll delete a layer. And I'll edit one of these two layers to be block work 100 mil. And I'll change the thickness. Save changes, save changes. So this wall was uh, of the wrong type. And now that I created the correct type, I can go to the object information, type, edit, change it to block 100, press OK. And there we go.
Now there's my wall. Okay, selecting this link annoys me. So what I'll do is I'll press on this filter button, add this selectable icon here, and now it shows it in the outliner. You can press there and it won't be selectable. I'll do the same for the other uh, three drawings. Okay. Now I can press GX. Okay. Duplicate GX. Okay. I'm going to now select this wall and that wall and press Shift E such that it extends up to it. Let's just stop here and we'll select all of these walls and we'll go to object property sets we'll choose pset wall common plus and here we'll press on demolish hit ok and I'm not sure it applied it it didn't apply it on all my wall so I'm gonna select them again demolish and I'll press on this copy icon hit OK maybe it worked maybe not it didn't work So something needs to be fixed I'm gonna have to do it one by one or if I wanted I could have the type have a property set that would be inherited by all these objects by the time you use this I hope that uh, this works in a one click now let's create a new drawing so that we can draw the actual construction so under drawings and document we'll create a new drawing well let's rename this one to demolition and we'll create a new one we'll rename it to construction we'll activate this view okay so as we can see these walls which are to be demolished are visible in our construction plan therefore we need to go to the object information here uh, with our drawing as the selected object we'll scroll down we'll find epc drawing we'll edit it out under include we need to include any ifc annotation which has the EP set P set status dot status equal to new and we need to exclude any IFC product which has the P set uh, underscore dot common forward slash dot status this is a funky syntax but I promise you it works fine we'll have a separate video on these syntaxes and and whatnot okay press apply then reactivate your drawing view and ta-da we have our ground floor construction and our walls have disappeared we're now ready to model So rather than drawing a single wall, I'm going to have just one brick wall of 70 mil, which I'm going to use to trace out all of this, which is going to help me considerably in scheduling out my, my bricks for, for this project. So I'm going to toggle the type manager, duplicate the brick 140, then I'll um, edit name first brick 70 then I'll activate the object and under geometry and materials material layer set I'll edit the layer set and just delete one press ok now I'm gonna trace out all of these walls so I'll start somewhere let's say on this corner here shift a this is too long, so I'm going to change its height to uh, its length to 0 0.5. Refresh, that's good enough. I'll duplicate this G 
x Now, there's a wall here which has a rotation, and for these types of precision rotations, we're going to need to use CAD transforms. So, if you Google CAD transform, you'll find this page here where you can name a fair price or press zero, but I hope you do support Steven Legger in his development then put your email address, get, and then download the latest version you find. Then you can just add this like any other add-on, preferences, add-ons, install. So make sure it's active. And then we'll press on CAD here. I'll press on, my, on R to rotate. Well, first, let's make sure I, I'll hide this, GY. Let's deactivate that cat tool. Go to the wall tool, GY. I'll make sure it starts at the right point, GX. Yeah. Now I'd like this to go all the way down here. And if I were to use cat transforms, press R, first point, second point, and then try and constrain it there, it, it just won't. So instead, I have a little trick where I place an object that reaches that exact point. So wall tool, that wall being selected, and shift E up until that specific point. I can now redo my CAD transform operation of rotation. So I'll select the first point, the last point, then I can use that. Okay. So now that I have this rotation, I can take both and hit Shift-T. Okay, so I'm going to stop modeling here, you get the idea. We're now going to learn how to create slabs. For this, we'll activate the slab tool. And since I have no slab types in my current file, I can create a type by first naming it on the top bar here, S200. Then I'll press on add slab type and it'll create a random slab with a random thickness and a random material that we can edit, but I won't do that right now. I'm just gonna add a slab. So I'll zoom to where I'd like my slab to start and I'll just put my cursor here for now and I'll press on Shift Add. Then I'll hit Tab to edit the profile of this slab. I'll take this first edge. Well, there are two, three types of selection, vertex selection, edge selection, and face selection. We'll toggle the edge selection, which you can also do by pressing on two. So I'll take that edge and then GX. Uh, okay, that's not good. GX. Then I'll take this 
top edge, GY, too many lines, GY there, then this one, GX, and for this bottom edge, what I'm going to do is subdivide it in three parts. So I'll do Control R, and this is a Blender command. So I'll uh, wheel my mouse up, which has created two points. Now it's three, four. Okay, so I'll just keep two points. And then I'll go to Vertex Selection. Press here or one. Select that edge, GX. Let me zoom in. GX, yeah. Then that point, G, no. Then the last one, G there. And then I'll press tab again to get out of the edit mode. And this has now created a slab. I can now get out of this view and look at my slab. And then perhaps select my slab. Well, it seems that it's up here. What I can do is slide it to the ground floor. And if you go and check the container, it won't refresh yet. But if you hit Control Save and look again, it, it will. So now I can edit the container of this slab. I'll go to the first floor, tick this box and hit copy to container. And there we go. Right, so now you can create a first floor plan, keep drawing the first floor. But when you draw walls on the first floor, make sure that you have the first floor collection selected at first. And this will tell uh, Blender BIM to place your wall at that story. Okay, carry on, and when you finish, let's go on to doors and windows.